Hi, this is Vignesh Nathan from the Technical Contact Center of Keysight Technologies. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, demo the 10G BASD compliance application software found on our Infinium oscilloscopes. So first, let me start with what you get um, with the oscilloscope software, which is the uh, test fixture and the parts associated with it. Um, here, what I have is the two 6-inch um, 10 g D Ethernet patch cables, a ballon, um, two SMP cables with SMP connectors on, on one end and an SME on the other, and the test fixture. So let me show you a little bit closer as to what the test fixture looks like. There's three sections for the test fixture. On the right, you would see the um, return loss calibration section, which is section three. You have the um, short, open, and 50 ohm terminations. In the middle, you would see the breakout for the four uh, lanes found on the 10G based the Ethernet um, cable. Each lane uh, goes up to 2.5 gigabits per second, so you have four of those, thus making it 10 gigabits. On the left here, you have section two, which is the slave jitter test section. And what happens here is you have the uh, one 10 G based dirt on this end with one of these patch cables and then another 10G based dirt on this end with the other patch cable. And the one on this end is the master and the other one is the sleeve. And D plus D minus is over here so you can draw out the clock signal and perform the jitter test. For this video, we're going to mainly be using section one, which is the middle here. And for the purpose of this demo, we're going to use this um, solar flare EVK board. Um, this is just uh, for our demo. You would have uh, your own device on the test. And it's basically an Ethernet chip placed on an FPGA board to provide the test signals out. Oh yeah, the ballon. This is used um, for the spectrum analysis test. Um, performed in the 10G BASD test. The, you use this to connect the differential lane signals to the single-ended input of a spectrum analyzer. Of course, uh, this balloon is going to create some distortion, and you will need to correct for that. And uh, I'll show you this. How I'll show you how to do this later. So I'm going to use my laptop which will be connected to the solar using a USB cable um, to set the different test modes. OK, so here, what I've set up is the um, EVK board here connected to the test fixture, and the cable is connected to channels 1 and 3. Um, and it is pair A for now that is connected. And it's connected to a 13 gigahertz 90,000 series Infinium oscilloscope, which is running the compliance app. Now to better show you the compliance app, I'm going to use VNC Viewer. And I'll show you, and this is the window that opens up when you open the compliance app. On the first page, you will see that there is a setup tab. Um, the selection here is spectral analysis. Uh, in this new compliance app version, you can perform some of the frequency domain power uh, analysis of your 10G based D dot using the oscilloscope. Uh, you don't need to use a spectrum analyzer. But if you do need to use a spectrum analyzer, um, you can select it. And make sure to include the balance correction file, which is which would correct 
affect the frequency response of the of adding the ballon to the differential pair of the 10 G base D lane. Um, here you can connect to a vector network analyzer for the MDI return loss test, um, but I do not have one available, so I'm not going to run that test. This MDIO automation is uh, to automate a switch circuit that the uh, compliance app can control. So uh, the next tab is uh, to select the test. Uh, as you can see, there's a range of tests, and I mentioned earlier that the different test uses different test modes. So you need to set your DUT to the correct test modes. So let's say for now we're going to select this uh, transmitter timing jitter test. The next tab you see is, the and this is where you configure settings for the test, settings for the scope. Um, so on and so forth. The first three settings might be the most basic ones, which I'll show you. Um, the reason why I connected channel 1 and 3 to the pair on the test fixture is because I said it here that the positive uh, differential signal will go to channel 1 and the negative differential signal will go to channel 3. Now, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to just test pair A. If you want to test the other pair, um, you can select that to all. And what you would have to do is transfer these blue cables to the different pair on the test fixture. So next, you go to the connect, which says that the uh, dot has to be set to test mode 2. And the scope has to be connected like so, which we have done. We'll now output a signal on the scope, which looks like that. And if I do an auto scale, it will look like a 200 megahertz sine wave. On a, and because the differential channel one and three is complementary. So channel 3 has some distortion, and I'll show what effects that has. Before I, I connected all of this, I did not perform any cable connector cal calibration, so then it might be due to that. So since we have connected it, I'm going to run the test. So we have connected to pair A already. And the scope uh, subtracts channel 1 from 3. And as you saw, a different function showed up. That's what this trace is. And it performs the measurement on that function, which is function 3. So the test has completed. And uh, we'll go straight to the results tab. And it says that the measured value is 30 femtoseconds, which is 99.5% of the uh, limit which is 5.5 picoseconds. If this actual value is more than that, then you will fail the test. So once the results come out, you will get a HTML report of the result. And I'll show you the details and a screen capture of the measurement. So let's go to a different test. Now that we have run the transmit transmitter timing jitter test, let's do a power spectral density test. So when you click on connect, it says you need to set it to test mode 5. And let's check on the scope that test mode 5 looks different. Let's do auto scale. And hit single, test mode 5 is a random pattern. And this makes sense because um, you, we are trying to see the full frequency response of the device. So say you've already select completed that, and then now let's run the test.
So for the power spectral density test, we run it with a with the scope. Oh, in this case, um, I did not select testing channel uh, pair A, so it's asking me for pair B. But uh, if you select under the configure tab for just pair A, this prompt will not show up. So let me just skip all that. The test is complete. But we can see here that there's a failure. The reason why there's a failure is because if we go to the report, the power spectral density trace actually hits the top limit. This is the bottom limit. So this red part here hit the top limit and that's why there's a failure. Now this can be this can definitely be caused by me not performing the calibration, but since this is just a demo, I just want to show you what a tail test looks like. And uh, we have four trials, and looks like trial three, trial three was the worst, and uh, because it crossed the margin by the largest percentage. And it shows you which pair it was. So uh, there was a short, simple video to show you how to run the demo, a 10 based demo. Of course, there's power spectral density and power level test. You can use the spectrum analyzer as well to run it. So thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions, please contact the Technical Contact Center for help.